Good morning. Nice to see so many friendly faces <clears throat> and my friends in the front row. Have you guys stood up here? Do you know how freaking big this room is? God. <laughs> I feel like I should project here. Uh, my name is Sean Inman. I am a time travel writer, not the biggest niche in the world, uh, but yes, for time, my fellow time travel writers. Uh, there's like three of us here, I think. Uh, <laughs> um, I am going to talk today about our author Facebook page. Just to give me an idea, will everybody who is a writer who does not have an author Facebook page raise your hand for me? Oh, you guys, you're killing me. Okay, good. I'm glad you came. That's what we're here for. All right, I'll tell you a little bit about, just a little bit about myself. Don't you hate it when people say that and then they go on about how cool they are for like 10 minutes? Well, no, I won't do that. Uh, I hit six figures for the first time in 2020, which is not all that great of an accomplishment because I started publishing books in 2012. Uh, and I went full time in 2016, but it took me a little while to get there. Um, here's the interesting thing for you, maybe. I hit six figures in 2020 using zero ads, okay? That's my, I guess if I have an accomplishment, that's it. I earned over $100,000 with no ads that year. And how did I do it? Primarily by using social media. And the talk I'm gonna to give today is gonna to be about Facebook. Because for me, first thing you need to know is who's your demographic? Male or female, what's the breakdown? Age, what's the breakdown? Because if you're writing YA, maybe Facebook is not necessarily the place you want to spend all your time. But me, I write what's known as, my friends call it that anyway, cozy time travel. I write time travel that doesn't have big car crashes or action or adventure. It's all about characters and human development and career uh, character arcs and things like that. So it's more like a cozy than it is a time travel adventure. Because of that, my average reader is female and in their 60s. Well, if your average demographic is female and in their 60s, you probably want to be on Facebook. If, if not, Instagram and all those other things are great. But for people that have gray in their beards or gray in their hair, Facebook is a pretty good place to be. All right. Question. How is your Facebook page like a blob of Play-Doh? In my mind, I remembered to stop at the store on the way here and get a little can of Play-Doh so I could dramatically drop it into my palm. That didn't happen. So imagine I'm holding a can of Play-Doh and you open a can of Play-Doh, what's the, what's the first thing you do? You breathe in that smell and you feel like you're four years old again, right? Because Play-Doh smells exactly the same in 2022 as it did in 1962. But you drop that little blob of Play-Doh into your hand and what do you have? You have like a little brick of Play-Doh. You're not gonna build a dog or a log cabin or anything out of that blob of Play-Doh. So what do you have to do? You have to start massaging it warming it up, making it softer, right? Then you can build whatever you want to build out of your Play-Doh. Your author Facebook page is the same way. Primary difference being you can warm up a blob of Play-Doh in about 30 seconds and your Facebook page. So I'm going to give you the bad news right up front. Everything I'm going to tell you today takes time and effort. This opportunity shows up wearing overalls and looking a lot like work. But here's the better news. It's all free. I never, ever pay to boost a Facebook page uh, post, ever. But as you'll see, I get pretty good reaction on my Facebook page. So first of all, many ways up the mountain. That's our phrase here at 20 books, right? I chose a difficult path for building my Facebook page. It is possible to build your Facebook page fans quickly 
by throwing some money at Facebook. Oh, if you throw money at Facebook, they'll haul the readers into your group and they'll like them and you'll be happy. And they cost you about a buck a piece. And if you can make them turn them into warm readers for you, you're way ahead of the game. I chose not to do that. The only way I've ever built my Facebook page is through a link in the back of my book and my page itself. So again, I don't spend any money. But because of that, I have about 4,500 fans on that page. Let me show you a post that I got. Take my glasses off so I can see it. So a Facebook page with only 4,500 fans, if you look at that reaction, I got 5.1 thousand reactions to that post, 914 comments, and here's the key, 376 shares. I got 36, Facebook showed this little post that I did to 36,000 people, and I only have 4,500 fans. How do you do that? You gotta be friends with the algorithm. And that's what this talk is about. How to shake hands and become friends with the algorithm. Let's talk a little bit about how the average author thinks about their Facebook page. And if I'm wrong, shout out, you're wrong. But I think this is how most people do it. What do they say about a Facebook author page? It's a waste of time, right? I go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I go in and I post and I might as well be shouting down a well. No, Facebook doesn't show it to anybody. So why am I wasting my time posting on my Facebook page? Does that sound familiar? Yeah. There's no such thing as organic discovery on Facebook anymore. The only way I can reach my readers who already volunteered to follow me is to pay Facebook more money. Does that sound right? Yeah, that's a pretty common idea. So pay to play. And when I see, because, so I haven't actually paid to promote a post on Facebook in probably eight years, but every time I put a post up, Facebook is like, would you like to send a little ad out about that? And I look at it and they're like, for $15, you can reach another 246 people. In my mind, that is not a good deal. So that's why I never boost posts. I'm not gonna send them $15 to reach 250 people. Instead, I'm gonna to try to devise my Facebook page so that thousands of people will see every single thing I post. Why should I have to pay to reach people who already followed me, right? And those are the people who might have been around on Facebook for quite a while because in the glory days, the happy days, 2009, 10, 11, 12, when somebody followed you, Facebook would just show them all your posts willy-nilly. It was a lovely time. The rivers ran with Pepsi-Cola. It was beautiful. <laughs> it's been gone for a long time now. So now we have to play with Facebook a little. We have to convince them to help us out a little bit. This is one I see that I love. I only get traction on posts that aren't about my book. What does that mean? That means, oh, if I post a funny meme, I get reactions. If I post a question, I get a ton of comments. When I post my new release, that's the sound of crickets, right? So every time I post about my book, Facebook doesn't show it to anybody. But when I post about inconsequential, meaningless stuff, I don't get any traction. I love that comment when I hear it from people. Why? Because they're almost there. They've made half, they're halfway across the bridge to having a successful Facebook page. But at that point, they think, what am I doing this for? I'm not a comedian. I don't want to just tell jokes on Facebook. I want people to buy my dang books. And so they give up and they're so close to making it to where they need to be. Here's how authors typically use their Facebook page. Again, if I'm wrong, go ahead and tell me. They don't post for a long time, right? Because why should I post? Nobody ever sees my posts anyway. So after a while, they think, I'm gonna give it one more try. So they come back into their page and they make an apology. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. 
I've been gone so long. I love you guys. You mean everything to me. I think about you when I go to sleep at night. I'm just so sorry. So I'm sorry I haven't been posting regularly. Here's the next step. I'm going to do better now. You're looking at a new human being right here. I am going to post every day. You're going you're gonna to see so much of me, you're going to be sick of me. I'm here to stay. Then that author will post regularly for a few weeks or a month. And you know what happens? Nothing. Because that's not enough. When I said this is going to take time, I mean it's going to take time. And by time, I don't mean a few weeks or a month. When I launched my Facebook page, here's how I did it. First thing I did, I hadn't even published my book yet. It was 2012, I didn't have a single book out. I went to my Facebook friends, my real life friends, and said, will you follow my page? <laughs> I don't, because first of all, not a great idea. I was just getting started because those people probably aren't my readers. You don't want people that aren't your readers, which is why I build organically through the back of my book. I know when they come join my Facebook page that they're already my reader. But I invited 40 friends to come over and they gave me sympathy likes. I just did that because I didn't, when I, when I got my first real reader to show up, I didn't want them to go, I'm the first one here. <laughs> Guess this guy's not all that after all. So I asked, I asked 40 friends to come by. And then I looked around at who was doing Facebook really well. That is still an excellent strategy. Find someone who's doing Facebook really well. I like to think I do Facebook really well. If you'd like to follow me, that's okay. And if you'd like to look through my posts, that's great. I'm happy for that. But unless you think eventually you're going to maybe interact with some of my posts, once you check everything out, it's okay for you to leave. That will not hurt my feelings. In fact, I'd appreciate it, because if you're not going to interact with me, having people who are fans of your page who don't interact with your page, that's the death spiral. And if you get enough of those people that aren't interacting, what that's telling Facebook is, I don't really care about this guy. I don't care about what he's saying. And the algorithm hears that, and they start showing you to less and less. So. Whenever you like anybody's Facebook page, please do them a favor and interact with them. Comment, share, react. Here's a little secret. You know the little reactions on Facebook? They're weighted. They are weighted. If you hit a like on somebody's page, which I think that's probably what 60 or 70 percent of people do, because they feel like, oh, those others, they're so, they're gushing, right? Oh, I love that. I don't really love that, but I'll give it kind of a sympathy like. That's okay. It doesn't hurt them, but it doesn't help them much either. Any of the other reactions, the heart, the I'm sad for you, the oh, you've really ticked me off now, little mad face emoji, Facebook takes those and gives them more weight. The next most weighted thing after that is a comment. If you give them a comment, even if it's just congratulations because they've shared some milestone, that's great. That helps them. And that's what you want. The best thing you can get is a share. That is a heavy weight in the Facebook algorithms. That post that I showed you from my page, by the way, do you want to know what that, that post was that went semi-viral on Facebook and got me 36,000 people? I'm going to tell you, I've been doing this for 10 years. I never have any idea when a post is going to go viral. I posted about the movie Somewhere in Time because it was the anniversary of its release. And I said, I write time travel. That's a time travel movie with Christopher Reeve. Oh my gosh, I love this movie. This is one of my favorite movies. And I shared the poster of it. And then it went boom. And I started getting shares and comments and loves. I mean, you saw it had, I forget how many comments, but like a thousand comments on it. Um, now, you might ask, but that's about some movie. How does that help you? 
that same week that I had that post go semi-viral on Facebook, I got 112 new likes on my page. I usually average about five likes a, a week on my page, a little less than one a day. So I got, in a couple of days, I got 112. Why? Because people looked at that, oh, it, I love that movie, I commented, and then I think, well, maybe I'll follow him and see what else he's got to say about things, okay? When I was starting, I chose George Takei. You know George Takei? <laughs> Lieutenant Sulu, right? I watched him for a couple of weeks and I took notes of everything he did. What time of day he posted, what kind of posts he made, how he reacted to his fans. I mean, he was a big star. In 2012 on Facebook, he was about as big as it got on Facebook at the time. And I wanted to be like that. So I followed that path and I made notes. And one thing I noticed was he posted every day. Here's the problem. When you first start posting, it's like shouting down a well. Nobody reacts, nobody comments, you don't get 300 shares on a post, it's quiet. And that slowly kills our soul, doesn't it? So the only way that we can get around that is, the way that I did it anyway, is I made myself a promise. I'm gonna post to my author Facebook page at least once a day, every day, seven days a week for a year. And I don't care if I'm 364 days in and nobody reacts to my post, I'm still gonna post on that 365th day. And for the first couple months, it was pretty grim. I got no likes, no comments, and then just some magic switch flipped in the Facebook algorithm. And all of a sudden, I started seeing my fans, my likes, jump up on my page. And I went from probably 80 to 400 in a couple of weeks. And that was about three months in. And then I jumped from 400 to 1,000 in about two or three months. Now, when you've got 1,000 fans on your Facebook page, you're doing OK. You, you look legitimate at that point. And the only way I got there, I never paid for them, was just posting over and over and over. So authors post regularly for a few weeks or a month and then think, this is a big waste of time. I'm not getting anywhere. I don't get any traction. They say, to hell with it. And they stop posting again because I didn't get the reaction I wanted. Rinse and repeat. I can't tell you. I've got, I've got friends who have followed that exact same process. I've seen them do it at least five times. I'm back. I love you guys. I'm sorry I was away. I'm going to post regularly. I do it for a week. Nobody's reacting to me. I'm gone again until about three months later when they try it again. I am going to tell you that is not the way to build your author Facebook page. That's the death spiral. I'm going to give you the two keys that I see for building a successful author Facebook page. I just talked about that one, right? Consistency is so important. I'm going to talk, I'm going to break these down for you in just a second about what I mean for each of them. But these are the two keys for everybody that I see. Consistency and authenticity. For me, I add a third. I add transparency. I know that is not for everyone. Everybody isn't going to... When I went on a cruise to Alaska with my wife, I shared a picture of our cabin. I shared a picture of the glacier. I didn't share a picture of my food because I'm not 25. But I, I shared pictures of everything we did while we were on our vacation. And every day, I get up early, my wife gets up late. I would use that time, I would write up a little blog of what we had done the day before. And do you know what kind of traction those posts got? Through the roof. Now, not everybody is comfortable with all your readers knowing where you're going on vacation. But for me, transparency is the third thing. Let's break down our two keys. Consistency. 
I think this is the most important thing to building your author Facebook page, and it's where most people go wrong. Can I ask, show of hands, how many of you here post in your author Facebook page every day without fail? Okay, that's better than I thought I would see. <laughs> Good for you guys. And let me ask you, raise a hand again if, if so. Are you starting to get a little traction by doing that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, because I think that's the real key. But that's where most people go wrong. What does real consistency feel and look like? Well, we just talked about the primary one that I see, or one of the biggest ones, which is just being consistent. But I don't say that you have to post every day like I do. By the way, I post on average three times a day on my Facebook page. And for those of you that say, when do you have time to write, Sean? I put out about six books a year. So I still manage to get my writing done because this really doesn't take very much time. Real consistency. So you got to manage expectations. That's a big part of having an author Facebook page is managing expectations. My readers know they're going to hear from me first thing in the morning. And you know what a lot of them tell me? When I turn Facebook on in the morning, I don't scroll through, I go to your page first because they know they're going to get some kind of content from me every day. It might be a bad dad joke. The most common response to that is we need a groan emoji on Facebook, and that's fine because you know what? That's a comment. Where is that on the weighted scale? That's pretty good, right? If I can tell a joke that's so painfully horrible, people will share it. Can you believe this idiot? He just shared this joke on Facebook. What a moron. That's a big deal. That's very helpful. But beyond just, so real quick, you set the expectations. If you want to say, I'm going to post on my Facebook page once a week on Fridays, it's okay. It's not going to get you anywhere. But if you want to say, I'm going to post Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and that's it. You know you're going to find me on here Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's okay. Just be consistent and manage those expectations. But real consistency to me is more about your brand and your message and who you are and sharing that with your readers. So I have a few things on my page that I'm really consistent about. And I'm not saying you have to do these things. These are the things I do. No politics. No religion. That's the kind of thing that just blows a Facebook page up, in my opinion. Then I look at the most popular author in the world, Stephen King. Well, he's in there slinging his political opinion every which way. He's Stephen King. When I've sold 300 million books, I'll think about slinging my political opinion around. Until then, no. No politics on my page. But beyond that, you have to choose what kind of a message you want to give to your readers. And that message, believe me, is not, buy my book. That message is, I want to establish a connection with you. I want you to feel like you know me. So a couple of weeks ago, in preparation for this talk, I went on my Facebook page. If you follow my page or look at my page and you scroll back about two weeks, you'll see it. And I said, can I ask why you follow my page? And the overwhelming answer was not, we like your dad jokes. The overwhelming response was, we feel like we know you, like you're genuine, like you're not big timing us as an author. And I think, well, I'm not big timing you because I'm not big time. But if my readers want to think I'm big time, I'm perfectly okay with that. So you've got to decide what your real message is to your readers. For me, it's kindness. Be kind. And so that sets a pretty high bar for me because when somebody comes in and says something stupid to me, I can't just rip them a new one because be kind is the motto, right? So... But what I do find is my readers aren't necessarily that way. I had somebody in, come in a couple of weeks ago and say something accusing me of lying on my Facebook page, which I would never dream of doing. Um, and I didn't have to respond to him. My readers tore him a new one, and he left the group, and that was okay. He, he didn't belong there. 
For consistency's sake, you can use scheduling tools. And I know, a pers I know several people that do that. They sit down for about two hours on Sunday and they schedule everything they've got to do for the next week. I'm going to post this one Monday at 7 a.m., Tuesday at 7 a.m., and it takes them maybe an hour, hour and a half, and they are good to go for the week. I don't do that. Not because that's not a good strategy, perfectly valid strategy, because in my writing, I'm a pantser, complete. I write into the dark, a la Dean Wesley Smith, and I can't sit there on a Sunday afternoon and think of seven posts that I want to post over the next week. I just can't think of it. It's always something I saw on TV, something I heard on the news, something I read in a book, a movie I watched. That's the things I post about because I'm always looking for things to post about like that. But nothing wrong with using scheduling tools. We need to train the Facebook algorithm and that's that you, here's the important thing. We tend to think of sometimes Amazon, sometimes Facebook as our enemy. They're not. They want the same thing you want. You've just got to find out how to give them what they want so that they give you what you want in return. We got to train the algorithm. Um, I shared a post in the 20 books group a month or so ago. Uh, this is what I do with my Facebook page. This is how it works. These are the keys for me. And someone who works, some young person who works in social media marketing, went to my page and said, your posts are too long, Sean. They're not. But you know what? I've trained the algorithm, and I've trained my Facebook fans that I'm going to write long posts. And by long posts, I mean, what's the average Facebook post? 20 words? My average Facebook post is probably three to 400 words. Why? Because I'm a writer. I write. I like to share my writing on my page. We'll talk more about that coming up. But that's all part of, sh of training the Facebook algorithm to work in your favor. We just talked about consistency and messaging. Pick what you want to say and then find novel ways to say it. Some of us write in genres that are pretty tight on what, if you're going to use this trope, you better have this outcome ultimately, say romance. If you're going to write a romance, you've got to have a happily ever after or the readers are going to just kill you. Um, you need that same consistency and messaging on your Facebook page. Authenticity. What is your core value and message? I love this quote. I did not think of it. I'm stealing it because I'm a writer. When your core values are clear, your decisions are easy. What does that mean? When I know what my core values are, that gives me a vision to look at the world. When I have something to say, I can easily hold it up within that vision and say, does that fit with my core values of being kind on my Facebook page? Sometimes I have to delete posts that I would love to make because they don't fit my core values. How, we talked about this a minute ago. How distant or near do you want to be to your readers? You've got to decide that. And I'm an old guy. Nobody's interested in coming and stalking me. If I was a, a, a woman or a young woman, I, I might make a very different decision, and I can appreciate that. I appreciate why you want to kind of hold your readers a little more at arm's length. A person in my last panel I was in said, I know what's out there. And I get that. So, but you've got to, you just got to make that decision and make it part of your Facebook page then. How do you connect your real self with your audience? How do you strip yourself bare? And my word for that is practice. I was a radio DJ for 10 years. The best advice I ever got as a radio DJ was talk to one person. When you're on the air, you don't say, Hey, listeners, how you doing? Here's a song I think you'll like. No, you say, man, I listened to this earlier today, and I loved it. It's brand new, and I think you're going to like it, too, because you're speaking to one person. On your Facebook page, please speak to one person. Don't say, hey, readers, because that is not inclusive. It's too broad. It's too much. But you can say, good morning. How are you doing 
and then go on from there. But I think that's one of the most important keys is we're not, Facebook is not a broadcasting thing. Facebook is a narrow casting thing. This is important. When people do start responding to your posts, respond to every comment. I respond to every comment with a love or a care instead of just a like. I'm going to tell you, you got to, you got to kind of work up to that to get the stomach for that because most people don't have it. But now everybody knows on my page that's what they're going to get. And what does that do? That feeds the algorithm. Because remember what I said? Those stronger reactions feed the algorithm. So somebody comments to me, I comment back and I give them a love or a care, often a laughy emoji because I tell a lot of bad jokes, like I say. But it's so important. That was the other thing that when I asked them, why do you follow my Facebook page? They said, because you see me. You respond. Every time I say something, you respond to me. And you know what else they said? No other author does that. We just talked about and how to react. Yeah, eventually you build a community, right? Like I say, so many of my readers tell me, I turn on Facebook and the first thing I do is click over to see what's going on on your page. And I scroll down because people are always adding new comments to things I've commented on. That's a community. My readers get into conversations with themselves where they don't need me at all. And I just let them go because that's a community. Track everything. Oh my gosh, is that right? You were supposed to hit me when I started rambling on like this. Uh, what topics and styles encourage the most interaction? Uh, is there a, a time of day that brings better engagement? Those are things you track and keep track of. For me, I found my best time was 7 a.m., so I post every day around 7 a.m. Here's some things you can, this is the number one thing I get. How the heck am I supposed to post every dang day here? So I call this speaker for the dead because I'm a big Ender's Game fan. Um, these are possible topics for you. When someone famous dies, we're writers. We should be able to write a nice little obit for them that's maybe 50 to 100 words long. Go find a nice picture of them, put a nice picture and that little obit, and you know what's going to happen? All the people that love that person that just passed away are going to comment and like, and what are we doing? We're training the Facebook algorithms. This person responded to my post. Those get a lot of shares for me. I've become kind of a semi-professional obit writer. When somebody like Prince or Tom Petty, I do a lot of music on my page, so when somebody big musically like that passes away, I write a real obituary about them, and I get a ton of comments. Questions always work, always. I mentioned do you like salt on your watermelon? Thousands of responses to that. Do you believe in UFOs? Do you believe in ghosts? Those are, there's a million questions out there and people, questions like that, people all have an answer to. No, I don't believe in ghosts. Do I look like a moron? Or I sure believe in ghosts. I've seen, you know, you're gonna get a million responses. And what are we doing? We're training the algorithms. Memes? People tend to overuse memes, I think. I use about one meme a week out of my like 20 posts that I do. But here's what I do. I, I have a meme vault on my computer and I go back and find memes from like five years ago that are still, that are still relevant, but nobody's seen them in a long time. So they're always like, John, where did you get these cool memes? And I say, 2015, yeah. <laughs> Using your page as a blog, blogs are out but I use my page as a blog. Whatever I might have written as a blog back in the day, now I use my Facebook page. And those, those posts are often 800 to 1,000 words long. And you know something? Those are the posts I get the most reaction, comments, and shares from. And that's where I share things personal to me. Um, but anything you might blog about, try putting it on your Facebook page once you're getting some traction. Uh, right? I write little, sh little stories and blast them out there. If I have like an idea for a three or 400 word story, I'll write them and put them out there because we're writers, right? That's what we do. Uh, big book of, book of versaries. 
<laughs> and milestones, you know, oh, I just sold my 10,000th copy of this book. Woohoo, look at me. Or I published my first book on this day 10 years ago. Woohoo, look at me. Those are all good. Um, because those aren't, hey, buy my book. Those are, let's celebrate together. That's another theme of mine, I'm, is, is gratitude. I'm always telling my readers how grateful I am for them and what they bring to me. Uh, maybe screen captures, when you hit number one new release or you're number one in a category, take a screen capture and go, you don't go, woohoo, look at me. You go, I am humbled by the support my readers have given me here, that you have given me here. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but on your professional page, you can use your Facebook memories. So you go up into the search box, you type memories in, and it'll show you everything you've posted for the previous 10 years, uh, or whatever, however long you've been on your, posting on your page. I steal stuff for myself all the time. Uh, important, when you do make a post, use photos your audience will love. For me, that's books primarily. I love pictures of books. If you don't know, uh, AppSumo started their Turkey Day, Black Friday deposit photo thing right now. If you follow AppSumo and get their email, you can go order a hundred uh, really high quality that you own the right to, to download uh, for $35. Usually, it, on Turkey Day, it'll go to $50, but you can get it right now for $35. Okay. This is what we're talking about, finding the proper mix. How, how, and that's, you're going to find that with your own audience. How, what percentage of memes and jokes and blog? Yes, I promote my books. But I promote my books now because people actually want to know about my books. When I first started, nobody cared about my books. So I didn't, write, I didn't write about my books very much. I was building my audience. Now I share a lot about that. What percentage are serious? What percentage are funny? Okay, Facebook doesn't like links, especially links that takes you out of Facebook. So if you put a link to your book in your main post, it's the kiss of death. It's not gonna get shown very much. So there's two ways to counteract that. One is to put the link in the first comment and say, I'll put the link in the first comment and then do that. Here's another good thing. Create a post with a link and tag it to the top of your page. And then when you make the post about it, you say, I can't, I, Facebook won't show you this if I put a link in here. So I've tagged my, my link to that book at the top of my page. I've, so you can go find it. It works. Uh, link to your Facebook page and your back of book material. I'm trying to get through, I got questions here. Uh, you can mention your professional page on your personal page, but again, only if people are actually gonna interact. Don't worry about repeats. When I was on the radio, we used to say we turn our entire audience over in seven, every seven minutes. So Facebook is kind of like that. So I make, it, it's not unusual for me to post something that I posted three years ago. Here's my favorite quote, most people aim at nothing and hit it with unerring accuracy. You need goals. They show progress in your page that might not otherwise be visible. Here's a post that I made in 2018. If you look, it shows I had 135 likes, 30 comments on a share. I just cut and pasted that same one a couple of weeks ago, same post now. 342 likes, 61 comments. So that's not like a huge jump, but that shows that I basically doubled or tripled my audience over about a four year period. So goals are good. That's it. I didn't think I was gonna make it to the end. We've got four minutes for questions. Please use the microphone and get sit down. I'll come down there and hit you guys. Hi, good morning. Hi. Um, I have a Facebook page. I also have a uh, private Facebook group. Yep. So for those of us who have both, because um, I was thinking while you were presenting, maybe I could make my group more, at, turn it into more of a street team art group, yes. and then have the Facebook page as where I interact with people. What are your thoughts on having both? Yes, I have, I have four kind of groups. I have my Facebook page, which I look at that as my forward facing uh, out to the world. That's where my general stuff goes. I have a group of beta readers 
that's like my backstage group. They get all the backstage information. They get to see my covers first and all that. I have a group that's dedicated just to my series. That's got 800 people in it. That's my favorite group because they ask me the best questions about it. And then I have a Patreon. The Patreon is the true backstage. That's where we're just sitting around talking about things. But all these things that I'm talking about today are applicable whether it's a group or a page or a Patreon. It's all applicable to it. So. This is uh, sort of a question about the algorithm that I don't know if you'll be able to answer. I don't um, know either. My audience is mostly women 60 plus and they're on Facebook. Yep. I'm 30 and on Instagram. Um, on Instagram, you can link a Facebook page and have yep. it post. Do you know if Facebook treats posts better yeah. if you make them directly to the best to, I'm going to tell you I'm not an expert in that because I'm not I don't do a lot on Instagram I used to have a person who made posts for me on Instagram um, but it just didn't feel like my demographic um, but at the time we were cross promoting with that and I got really good traction with that so I think that's a really good tool to have in your toolbox good morning good morning sir um, I've got a Facebook page and a Facebook profile. I was wondering if you know which is better to use. Which is better to use. So your profile, that's what you get when you sign up to Facebook, right? That's where you see the pictures of your grandkids and, well, or kids maybe, um, et cetera. You need a business page in order to run ads on Facebook. So you've got to have a business page. For me, my profile and my Facebook page, my, pro, my professional author page, I keep them very separate. Unfortunately, sometimes people search for me and they come up with my profile first and they send me a friend request and I'll usually accept it and then say, really, you want to go follow me on my Facebook page because this is not the place I'm posting the stuff you're going to want to know about. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, Hi. Long time writer, but a new author. Okay. Um, do you use Facebook to the exclusion of having a separate author website, like a WordPress site or no. anything else like that? No, I, I, have, all, I have all the things. All the um, things. I have a newsletter that's got about 5,000 people on it. I use that. Um, I have my Facebook page and I have my website. Um, I have someone that keeps my website up for me because I'm terrible at that. If I did it, I would still not have the last 12 books I'd written up there. Instead, I've got somebody that does it for me. So. Last question. All right, so my Facebook page is moving upward, and Good. I've asked a couple of people this, page or group, and I've been told both. Now, my question for you is, should I put one of them more forward than the other, or should I just say, let's just do both and see what happens? I would sure check to see where my activity is. Where, where am I boosting the algorithms? What, so I, I might work on both for a period of time, see where I'm finding success, and that's where I would put most of my emphasis. Um, just experiment, keep track, and make decisions kind of on the fly as you go. And I am Thank out you. of time. That's it. Thank you, guys. Anybody wants to talk to me, I'll be somewhere right over here for as long as you want to talk to me.